Okay, how you doing? Um, I'm going to talk about uh, very quickly this idea of doing all of my alterations to a tangent function. Uh, I'm just going to talk about going through and just give you an example of if I have an amplitude, uh, not an amplitude, I'm sorry, uh, let's say I have an alteration of my points, um, what's going to occur there, uh, and I have a period change possibly, and I'll have uh, we'll see what the C value does to the function moving it left or right. So do I have some sort of shift left or right of the actual whole period? And we're going to talk about do I have some sort of vertical shift up and down. So things we want to talk about here for this one. Um, one, I'm not going to put in, uh, any of my previous videos I put in the idea of, you know, what is my shift left or right, what is my shift up or down. Um, I'm not going to put into this video the idea of what's my horizontal shift because I'm just going to figure out what that is based off of my period. And to start this off, I would always start off these functions of graphing them with what is inside of the actual function to move it left or right. And I would always start off with the idea of what is my vertical shift. So the first one that I'm going to choose here is my vertical shift. And the, the value you think about the function, if this were just the tangent of x, Okay, what would happen if I just subtracted three from all the values? Well, all the outputs would just shift down to three. So it's kind of like the idea of what if you just had a regular function of x plus two? And what you notice is that if you had x, the regular x function would just all the points would shift up two. Hence the idea of y equals mx plus b, where you're just shifting the point up and down on the y-axis. Well, essentially it's the same type of deal here, except I have some sort of, uh, in this case, I will have some sort of um, horizontal shift for this one. So let's talk about that. So first things first, what you need to know is that the tangent function has a period of pi, but that period of pi starts at negative pi over 2 and goes to pi over 2. And the whole reason for that is because when we start drawing these trigonometric functions, you have to have some positive values and negative values because all the trigonometric functions are going to have a positive and a negative value. So what we do here is we come up to this and we go, okay, the, orig the original tangent function okay, crossed through the point zero, 0, and went up and had a vertical asymptote at pi over 2. And then we came back over here, and when I crossed through the, the uh, axis again, it went down and had a negative uh, pi over 2. It had a vertical asymptote there. So that is one of those things you kind of have to remember because that's how I'm going to adjust my period. So the very first thing I do is... Let's talk about how this adjusts my period. So here we go. So I'm going to put my work down here. I'm going to have to erase it because of the shift I've got going on in my problem. But I just want to show you how I'd go about doing this problem. So first things first, I would set up a compound inequality. And I'm just the guy who prefers the compound inequality because it does two things for you at once. It tells you what your new period is. And it also tells you where your starting point and end point are. So I have this negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to, not equal to, is strictly less than. Um, and then I'm going to put in what I have up here, which is this pi x minus pi over 2, which is strictly less than pi over 2. So essentially what these values are, okay, are your vertical asymptotes. So at the end, when I go through and I solve for this x, I will have what my new vertical asymptotes are. So here we go. Let's go ahead and solve it. Well, if I just solve this compound inequality, I just start off by adding pi over 2 to both sides. So add pi over 2, add pi over 2, add pi over 2. Well, negative pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is the same thing, so they cancel out and I make 0. So I have 0 is less than, re is less than pi x, which is going to be strictly less than, well, a half plus a half. Forget that there's a pi there. Think of it as like an x. If I have 1 half x plus 1 half x, I have 1x. So in this case, I have 1 pi. All right? And the last step that I have to do is divide by pi. Divide by pi. Divide by pi. And what I get now for my new uh, period for this one, or what's going to happen, is that I'm going to have 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than, sorry, not equal to, I keep saying that, is less than 1. So what I have here now is that I've got this new period of x being greater than 0 and x being less than 1. And that right there is everything I need to know for my new period for when I go to graph. So 
My period up here, I'm going to say, is going to go from 0 less than x, which is less than 1. My interval steps, okay? So you take the whole period, and you figure out what is the total distance my period goes, and then you divide that interval into 4. So my interval up here, if I figure out the whole distance that this period goes, so I'm just going to take the end point, subtract the beginning point. So what is 1 minus 0? It's 1. We divide it by 4 to figure out to my next critical value. So 1 divided by 4 is 1 fourth. So my interval steps that I'm just going to use here are all going to be 1 fourth, a length of 1 fourth. My asymptotes. So my asymptotes for this one are going to be the end point, the end point and the beginning point of my new uh, period. So the asymptotes are at 0 and are at positive 1. And these are the vertical asymptotes. And then my critical values. So my critical values are now just going to be my interval steps. So 0 plus a fourth is 1 fourth. Okay? Zero, a 1 fourth plus a fourth is 1 half. And then 1 half plus a fourth is 3 fourths. And then I'd be back to my vertical asymptote. So here's my critical values that I'm going to help me plot my points on my graph. So I hope that you can see out of all of this, just by doing this, uh, this compound inequality, I was able to put all of this information up here, and I'll now be able to graph based off of the knowing that this, how does this alter my point shift up and down, and then this part here, what does it do to my axis? So the last couple of things I'm going to put in here, okay, I'm going to put in this idea that I'm going to have a vertical shift, okay, so I'm going to have a vert shift, and I'm going to go down three, because it's a negative, all right, and the last thing I'm going to do is that from my new axis, my critical values are all going to be uh, in up three from it, okay? So up three. So let's go through and show you. So because there's going to be some uh, vertical asymptotes that I'm going to show the dashed line, I'm going to draw in my axis here, my new axis, which is just the shift. So basically, I'm just taking the original axis that's centered around the uh, x-axis, and I'm just going to shift it down three. I'll draw it in red. So my vertical shift is down three, so I'm just taking this axis up, putting it, and putting it down here. So I'm just going to use it for me to help me graph. So here we go. So I hope you can see that in red there. The next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to talk about my period, which goes from zero to one. Since it goes from zero to one, I know my vertical asymptotes are at when x is zero and x is one. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to draw a one up here, big enough, far enough out. So I got one. Okay, I'm going to draw a vertical asymptote through that, so here we go. So there's my vertical asymptote, so I'm just going through my information now to help me solve it. My interval, my interval tells me how much it is from each step. So if I start at zero and I go a fourth, okay, I'm at one fourth. And I'm going to mark it on the new axis, I'm not going to mark it on the old because this is the one that I'm going to use to help me plot my points. So I'm going to go a fourth. So one fourth, and then another one fourth. So what I've got here is one fourth, one half, three fourths. Okay? Now this is the part where it all requires just the remembering the pattern of the trigonometric function of tangent. And remember tangent doesn't have any amplitude. It's actually amplitude is negative infinity to positive infinity because it's going to go forever and ever and up. But we need to think about the critical values that it had. Originally, at pi over 4, the output was 1. So my pi over 4 is now my new 3 pi over 4. My 0 is now my new uh, pi over 2. So when I divide it into 4, just remember the middle value was always the part where you start your function on the new kind of axis you've drawn. So there's that point. The next points are easy. They're just up 3. So I go over here and up 3. So I go over to the right and up 3. Okay, so here's that, up, over, and three. And the next one I go over to the left and down three. So here's my next point drawn in here. All right, so the main part is just remembering this trigonometric pattern. And after this, when I'm done, I'm pretty much done. Remember, I used, and where did I get that three from? It's this value right here. Why did I go up three? It's because of this A value right there. So if it would have been four, I would have gone up four. A half, I would have gone up a half. A third, I would have gone up a third. Uh, whatever that value is, whatever the next value over is, I go up, and this one I go down. If this were negative, I'd do the opposite. 
This one would be going up, so I'd be going left and up. I'd be going right and down, so I hope you understand that. And I basically now have all my values that I need to draw this, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw it. So at here, this value, I'm just going to show that I come down here and I go like this forever. And then I come up and I'm going up forever and ever and ever. Now I have my positive and negative values. If I wanted to draw another one of this, I would literally just pick this up and stamp it right here uh, with the same values going up by one fourth. Uh, things that I want to talk about for this now that I'm done. Just because there's a pi there and I don't have pi on this axis, don't forget pi is just a number. Pi is just 3.14 dot, 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 dot. So what you need to understand is that pi is an actual value. It's just an irrational value. So why is it that we use that symbol pi? It's because we know it's irrational. And the only way you can ever show exact is to show the exact pi symbol. But if you wanted to on these things up here, especially like if you look at your graphing calculator, it's not going to put that pi in pi over 2. What you'll notice is that like it will put the actual values in. So like pi will say is 1.57 and those things on your graph. So those are some maybe some values you might want to memorize. But other than that, uh, just to run back through this, the, the way we started is we started with the original period, which was from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. We set this uh, in a compound inequality between it. We solved for x. That found our new period of 0, x, and then 1. The interval, we took the end point, subtract the beginning point. That gave me an interval, which was 1 in this case, divided by 4, so each step was 1 fourth. If it was pi with it, you would just put a pi with it and put a pi with these. Uh, the asymptotes are the beginning point and the end point of my new period. 